got another new release from another new distillery today. It's another Scottish distillery. It is the Heeruk, which is how I've decided to pronounce that. And the first thing you'll notice about this one is that it's a very innovative, which is a way of saying different <laughs> presentation. Very different box. And I guess that's the front. Yeah, that must be the front. The bit where it opens is at the back. Ooh. We'll get to this in a minute. We will. But I'll show you a close-up of the front of the box. It is 46%. It's also... They're telling us that it's natural colour and non-chill filtration, but that information is only available on the website. I know some people think that, that doesn't matter as long as they're telling us somewhere they think that that's fine. I disagree. I think it needs to be on the box and the label because if it's just on the website, they're free to change it and backtrack or make some batches apply to that and some don't. And it's just a nightmare. It needs to be on the label. And in this case, I don't think it is. But Isle of Harris, it is a new distillery. And a, apart from the fact that they're not telling us all the details on the label, they are a new craft distillery, as most of these new distilleries are. And the distillery was actually founded in 2015, so they've been around for a little while now. And Harris, the Isle of Harris, they've got this bizarre situation where the Isle of Harris and the Isle of Lewis are actually the same island. I believe you can actually drive between the two. I think there's some mountainous terrain in the middle, kind of possibly why they are or were kind of separate communities. But the Isle of Lewis, which is basically the other side of the island they have their own distillery as well the distillery on the isle of lewis is avangerig which predates this new distillery at the other end of the island by about six years and i did actually try some of the spirit of lewis stuff when it was first released i think probably when it was around three years old when it first became available and i didn't think it was great that early whiskey from avangerig on the isle of lewis I thought it was very oily, very fatty, probably a little bit too fainty to work at such a young age. Possibly showed some promise if they matured it for maybe 15 years. But sadly, that distillery on Lewis Avangerig, they do seem to have gone very, very quiet lately. Which is another reason why it's great that we've got this new distillery at the other end of the island on Harris which is what we'll be looking at today. And it's an, as far as I know, it's an entirely different distillery, nothing to do with Avangerig. And perhaps more importantly, I think that, that that spirit from the Isle of Lewis, Spirit of Lewis, I think that came out in around 2017. And I think more importantly, I think that the whiskey world has changed a lot since then. And in particular, new distilleries have changed a lot since 2017. I've definitely seen a lot this year because I've been covering a lot of these new distilleries myself. I've seen that a lot of these distilleries, they're no longer releasing immature spirit and kind of giving us a, a limp promise that it will be better one day. More and more new distilleries these days in Scotland and England around the world, they're all getting much better and much cleverer at making three-year-old whiskey good in and of itself. I will also say at this point that after this one, or possibly one more, maybe, depending on if I can get some, I probably will be drawing a line under this little, it's not even a mini-series anymore, but this series on new distilleries, because there's, there's just too many of them. There's dozens and dozens of new distilleries now, and there's another one coming online and giving us an inaugural lease. It seems like every few weeks... This little mini-series on new distilleries I started with, like Loch Lee and Rasse and things like that. It was only ever meant to go on for about six weeks, and it's kind of taken almost all of 2023. So this one and maybe one more, and then I think I'm going to move on to something else. So let's get around to that weird box. <laughs> so you flip it around, you go to the back. I don't know if you saw, that there are actually photos of... Herex, people from the Isle of Harris on the box as well, which is a nice little touch. I assume that they're all people that are involved with making this whiskey. I don't know. But when you flip it around to this side that's got the tab, 
you give that a little pull and that kind of falls away and that lifts up <laughs> and it all just kind of falls away from the bottle like a beautiful flower and you end up with this a little bit odd but also very innovative and it probably is possibly low waste it probably would be low waste if the the card wasn't as thick as it is because it is quite substantial but I guess it uses a little bit less material than a traditional box there are a few things that I don't like about this and you know what the first one's going to be that I'm going to mention bloody hell and that's that boxes that aren't boxes don't protect from dust sun and knocks so if you are going to keep this long term then that's not really going to do much to protect your whiskey unless you're strategic about how you put it on your shelf. Another one is that I'm not the biggest fan of this little closure thing because although it works at the moment, there's, that's not a magnet. That's actually a little push fit thing between this little square here and that square cutout. So the more times you do that, it's going to wear out and get looser. Which kind of brings me on to the next point. Holding this thing, and that's just popped open, holding this thing is kind of terrifying. It really reminds me of the old Bal Blair boxes. You know, the ones that had like doors on two sides. So they opened out on one edge, which is a really nasty surprise for anyone that picks one of those up for the first time that doesn't know that. And I think that this innovative because it is innovative and hopefully it's low waste good for the environment and all that but this packaging from the isle of harris it is a little bit of a bottle launcher like the old bal blair boxes i like what they've done it looks good it does the job for shipping but you know what i'm going to say if a box is not a box it probably shouldn't exist at all or just go for like a simple recycled card packaging like ardner merkin what I quite often find myself doing with this one is rather than picking it up by the box and not knowing if it's just going to drop your bottle, just pick it up by the bottle like that. But if you're going to do that, you're kind of just picking it up by the bottle anyway. So why not just ditch the packaging anyway? What I do really like about this packaging is that you get a little coaster in the bottom. Coasters are always good. Love that. Be keeping that. So details about this whiskey. I'll show you the bottle as well. If you haven't seen that yet. It's probably a slightly kind of modern art deco kind of feeling to it. Details about the whiskey on this one. We know that this is made with 100% Scottish grown concerto barley. The barley is peated to 12 to 15 ppm with Isle of Harris peat. It does seem like lightly peated whiskey is having a little bit of a resurgence with companies like Ardner Merkin, of course, and White Peaks Distillery in England. Lightly peated whiskey does seem to be coming slightly back into fashion. We're told that this whiskey is at least five years old. We also know that it's made with a five day long fermentation. So probably a couple of days longer than average. And we know that this whiskey is matured in first fill bourbon barrels and Oloroso and Fino Sherry Butts. So let's get some in the glass and see if it's all been worthwhile. Where can I put that that you can actually see it? I need a, a stand at the back really. That's kind of... So the Heeruk, and is this, it's not the inaugural release, I don't think. What do they actually call this? On the stopper, oh, it does say first release on the stopper. Although it also says batch seven somewhere. I've definitely seen that. First release, HE 0000723. Distilled, matured and bottled in the Isle of Harris. So yeah, it is the first release. 
although the seventh batch of the first release. The Herook on the nose. Lovely, sweet and juicy, playful, fruity nose on this one. Strong aroma of sweet green apples and a little bit of a green grape note as well. A slightly sour fruitiness, which is a little bit of a nice counterpoint to that sweet fruitiness. Kind of like green apples with apple peel. A little bit of an apple sauce note. Got some subtle oak spices in there. I think that you can tell, you can smell and taste the influence of American oak on this one. Really nice creamy sweet American oak. A little bit of a sweet vanilla caramel Werther's Originals note. Hint of lime on the nose. And a little bit of musty faint peat. And it really is a lightly peated whiskey as that 12 to 15 ppm would have you believe. It's more of a an indirect suggestion of peat rather than actual peat flavours. It's really not a peat bomb. Probably a similar level and a very similar style of peat to like the more lightly peated Highland Parks, like the Highland Park 12 and 15, possibly a little bit less peat than what you get in the 18. So very, very pleasant nose. And in my opinion, at least, you wouldn't really believe this is an inaugural release from any distillery. To be fair, they have waited a little bit longer than they had to. They've waited until this stuff is five years old rather than three. And if that's their secret, and I think it's really, really worked well, let's see how it tastes. Really nice and sweet and delicate. Quite a sweet, malty, like lightly peated Highland style. Lots of honeyed malt, stewed apples, a little bit of spicy peat raising its head and some lightly toasted malt notes. Some toasted oak in there and a little bit, just a, a hint of slightly spicy Oloroso sherry. A little bit of a slightly confectionery note as well on the palate. A little bit of like a, a fruit flavoured jelly or jello note on the palate of this one. Again, probably coming through from the sherry. Only criticism with this one, it is a little bit thin, a little bit thinner than you'd expect for 46%. At times it does have the palate of perhaps a 43% whiskey. But I've said that before about a couple of the new releases from the new distilleries. Even Ardner Merkin I think is a little bit thin at 46%. It doesn't always feel that full strength. And I think that with all of these distilleries... This slight lack of body on these early releases is almost without a doubt something that will improve as they start to release older and older stock. As for the finish on this one, it's a little bit salty on the finish, a, a tiny little wisp of peat smoke, but really the peat in this one, you, you almost have to look for it. It's really a suggestion of peat rather than peat being the main flavour in this one. It's an accent rather than the entirety of the message. And more interestingly, I'd say that this is it's a peaty whiskey, a lightly peaty whiskey rather than a smoky whiskey. And a lot of those flavours really come through in the most noticeable way on the finish with some notes of things like cough sweets, slightly medicinal peatiness, but only a tiny little touch, kind of aniseed twists, cough candy, fisherman's friend, things like that. This whiskey, it does actually remind me a little bit of Ardner Merkin. It's kind of like, I don't want this to sound negative, but kind of like an Ardner Merkin light. It's like an Ardner Merkin with a little bit less peat and a little bit less oak spice and a little bit more fruity without actually being a sherry dram. Obviously this is a sherry dram. They've told us that there's been Oloroso and Fino butts used on this, but I'm not getting much sherry at all, really. There's a sweet fruitiness throughout on this, so you could say that that sherry has been well blended in. I think that a lot of us these days, myself included, when we're told that there's going to be Oloroso and Fino in a whiskey, we kind of expect that to be the main flavour, but with this one it's kind of more traditional than that. It 
isn't used as a crutch to cover up the spirit. To their credit, they allow you to taste and smell the spirit in this one. And the peat and the sherry and everything else in this one, they're all integral parts of the whole, rather than covering anything up. So yes, there is... There's not a huge amount of peat on this, is probably what you'd expect for 12 to 15 ppm. And there is less sherry in this than I would have expected, but I also don't really think it's a bad thing. It really does make me think of something like an Ardner Merkin though. And with that peat in there, it kind of puts me in mind of something that's kind of a cross between an Ardner Merkin and a Highland Park. Probably not a coincidence that both this and Highland Park are made with barley, peated with peat cut from the northern Scottish islands. I think that the peat profile in this one, it does taste quite a lot like Orcadian peat. So I do recommend this whiskey. I think that it's another good one. It's probably better than average for these new releases that we're seeing from these new distilleries. And as with most of them, we're getting a craft presentation, whether it's all stated on the label or not. So it's a really good effort. And if you're considering getting this, it is a good one. It's not immature. The only thing that makes this a little bit hard or a little bit harder to recommend is that it is a little bit pricey at £65. So while it is very good, one of the big problems is that you can get a bottle of cask strength Ardner Merkin for a similar price with a higher age and higher ABV. I think that if this was priced at the same level as like a Wolfburn or even an Isle of Rasse like £45-£50, it would be much easier to recommend. As it is, I do think that I've got my money's worth from this one out of my £65 that I paid, but I probably wouldn't buy a second bottle of this until they come out with something which is either a little bit cheaper or a little bit bolder. Closing comments on this whiskey, the Heroic first batch. And this really isn't to do with the review of the whiskey anymore. This is just me kind of brainstorming stream of conscious a bit on the state of new whiskey and new distilleries. I'm going to do with this whiskey what we all know that you never should. And that's compare a brand new distillery to an established existing one. And I think that the thing that I always keep thinking of when I've been trying this is comparing this whiskey from the Heroic from the Isle of Harris to Highland Park because the the fruity, appley maltiness and the caramel where there's original note and the light sort of cough sweet peat on this one it really really does keep reminding me of like a highland park 12. so how does this whiskey from the heroic or harris compare to a highland park 12. they are very similar styles especially the peat and the sherry is very similar obviously the highland park is over twice as old as this but really the showing thing is that the intensity of the flavour is much be much better on this. It is a little bit light, lighter than you expect for 46%, but the flavours and intensity that you get from this, they absolutely trounce the experience that you get from a Highland Park 12 at 40%. And that's all down to the presentation. It's the fact that this is a proper whiskey made for whiskey enthusiasts. They've given us a long fermentation, they've sourced good casks, they've done things slowly and properly and with love. As opposed to Highland Park, which with their 10 and 12 year old whiskies, rather than being made with love, they're being made for a supermarket. When it comes to price though, that's perhaps a little bit more complicated. This cost me £65 and you can get a bottle of Highland Park 10 or 12 if it's on offer for under £30. So this is over twice as expensive. So perhaps not the winner in this battle on terms of sheer value for money. But personally, because of that difference in the intensity, there's only one of these whiskies that I'm going to be considering buying. I'm really not interested generally in any whiskey at 40% at any price level. Perhaps as a casual sipper if it's very cheap but probably like a lot of you guys 40% just doesn't do it and that Highland Park 12 in particular even when it goes down to £25 it's still questionable value because you've just got that that weak flavour and even at £25 I'm not going to be buying that Highland Park 12. 
I think the last bottle that I bought was the one that I bought to review on this channel. Whereas with this one, even though it is quite a bit more expensive, it's got the flavours and the intensity to back up that price. And this is something that I absolutely would consider buying. I would prefer if the price on this one was a little bit lower, but it's definitely worth consideration because although it's a little bit pricey, you do get something good for your money. The more interesting comparison on this one though is probably this versus something like the Highland Park 15 year old. Highland Park 15 year old, yes it's three times as old as this, but it's still not a craft presented whiskey. Highland Park 15, I think it was bottled at a bizarre ABV like 44? And when you compare this £65, 46% Isle of Harris whiskey to something like the 44% ABV, 80, 85 pound Highland Park 15, it really shows you that value for money argument with a little bit of a different perspective. I think that between this one and the Highland Park 15, that Highland Park 15, because of the ABV wasn't quite high enough, it was still a little bit of a limited presentation, limited flavour and limited intensity in my opinion. I did find that one a little bit frustrating, probably in a similar way as I find this one a little bit light. And the fact that Isle of Harris have made a whiskey which is pretty much on par with that Highland Park 15, I think that really tells you something. Despite the fact that this is a third of the age, they've made something that is kind of the equal to what you get for 80, 85 pounds and 15 years old from Highland Park. Interesting. Something to consider, perhaps. Because it's always easy to look at these new three, four, five-year-old whiskies from these new distilleries and think, yeah, the presentation's good, but it's still a really expensive three, three-year-old whiskey. But really, I think it is a bit more complicated than that. When you're comparing new distilleries to mass-produced whiskey, obviously it's not fair. And not just because the new whiskey is young and small-scale, but because the whiskey made from a lot of these new craft distilleries is often positioned in the market at a higher quality integrity price point with better flavour, better experience and better production value. Just some food for thought. Let me know what you think. Do you still think that 65% for something that is five years old is too much money? I think that this is worth, at least for a single one-off purchase, this is worth £65. And from the experience and the flavours that I've had on this one, it's made me interested and curious enough to see what they come out with next. Hope you've enjoyed this little review and my little thoughts on new distilleries. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and cheers. Oh, oh,